Okay, don't watch this video unless you heard of a guy named Ed Kusky or Eddie Kusky. He's a big time bottle collector and has been for 37 years. So, I don't want you watching this unless you know that name because this is going to have some negativity to it. And I don't want to lose any subscribers for talking negatively. So, here's the story. I've been thinking about this literally for years and years and I finally worked up the nerve to do this. I finally wanted to get this guy that was a severe thief to pay me up so I can stop being so mad about it. And I wrote to him on Facebook and you won't believe how he responded so negatively and cut me off from conversating with him anymore. So now it is time for me to totally destroy this guy and he's going to regret that he didn't pay me. Yes, he used to be my digging partner and he would rip me off all the time. But I didn't do anything about it because otherwise I would be stuck digging by myself. But mm, after all these years, I finally confronted him on the issue and he said I was a liar. Either he's delusional or he forgot about it because it's been so long. But he really made me mad the way he responded. I've been threatened to be sued for defamation of character before. So I spent hours and hours studying all the things there is to know about it. And this is what I come up with. No matter how badly you hurt somebody's reputation, you're allowed to do it as long as you're telling the truth. One time he even complained to me that nobody likes him because he's ripped off everybody. His name is also known as the Bottle Wizard. Yeah, he's pretty smart about bottles, all right. What he does is he goes to people's houses and says, how much do you want for this bottle? Mm. No, I can't make any money off of that one. How much do you want for this one? Mm, no, I can't make any money off of that one. How much do you want for this one? And just so forth and so on until somebody quotes a price that he thinks he can make money off of. That's not really ripping people off, but it sure makes people mad when, especially when he says stuff like this. Oh, I want this bottle for my collection. And then, uh, I reluctantly allow him to get it from me only to go over to his house a week or 10 days later and ask to see the bottle and then he says oh I don't have that bottle anymore I sold it that is definitely messed up lying and saying he wants it for his collection just to sell it to somebody else okay that's just the beginning that's just the tip of the iceberg about what this guy's done okay Another thing he did is we went digging in Hemet, California, and we found this incredible privy that had a number of amber cokes in it. There was uh, five of them from Los Angeles, one of them being the ultra rare that has Los Angeles in script and Coca-Cola in script, both on the same side, in the middle. It's about a thousand dollar a bottle. Well, he found one of those. I was digging another hole, or else he was digging the hole. And mm, he found this bottle. The reason I know he found it is because all of a sudden, halfway through the dig, he demanded that I go out to the truck and get a tool for him. And I said, hmm, something suspicious about that. And then he got so irate and mad about it. He literally was like, I'm gonna kick your ass if you don't go out to the truck and get it. And I wasn't in the mood to fight at the time, so I very reluctantly went out there. Came back a couple of minutes later with it. And of course he didn't even use it because it was all a ploy to get me to leave so he could hide this bottle from me. Hmm. How do I know this? Well, because he definitely brags about it. He even says it came from Hamlet. 
He has pictures of it on the internet, bragging about it. Saying how rare it is, of course. There's like only, I don't know, one to three known in mint condition. So, there. He ripped me off of a thousand dollar bottle. I mean, he should have paid me five hundred dollars to buy out my half if he wanted it. That's the way it works. Not steal it. I don't know if he hid it in his pants or if he hid it on the property and came back for it the next day. I guess I'll never know unless he wants to tell me. But anyway, that's just one of many things. Another time we were digging in Los Angeles and uh, I found a hole that was loaded with pharmacy bottles. Three of them were absolutely incredibly rare. Big eight ounce ones that were amber from Los Angeles. And we both needed these bottles for our collection. But somehow he thought he could make me forget that I even found those bottles. I dug those bottles out of the hole and handed them up to him. And uh, I never saw them again. When it was time to split the bottles for the day, I said, wait a minute, where's those three amber drugstores? And of course he couldn't answer that. Does he think I was stupid enough to forget about three incredibly rare bottles? Nope. Same thing happened. He hid them on his person or he left them at the site, buried them, hid them someplace, came back for them the next day. I don't know. Another time, I took him to an antique store in Escondido, California. There was, um, let's just say it had a lot of bottles for sale. So, unbeknownst to me, he was looking at one section of the store and I was looking at another section of the store and he switched the price tags and I didn't even know about it. It wasn't until a few days later that I went back to that antique shop and the antique store owner questioned me and said, who was that guy that you brought over here? He switched the price tags on several bottles in the bottom at much less price than what they were supposed to be. And I said, what? I didn't know that. And I gladly told him who it was. Because I don't want to have anything to do with thievery. So anyway, that is definitely a theft by deception or something like that. By switching the price tags, hmm. Putting a lower price tag on some merchandise to get it for a lower price is definitely very unethical. It's downright stealing. What else has he done? Oh, of course. He would say things to me like, Oh, will you trade this bottle to me or sell this bottle to me? And I would say, mm, No, I don't think so. But of course he would just hound me and hound me until he got his way. And he would lie and say stuff like, Oh, well, I've seen one of these before. This isn't one of a kind or anything like that. Only to later see him bragging about it on the internet, saying that it is one of a kind. Hmm. Most notably, I'm talking about the Ed Halbrider Amber Flask from Los Angeles that he tricked me out of just so we could brag about it incessantly, how rare it is. Hmm. Yeah, he said it was not one of a kind, then admitted later to other people that it was one of a kind. And of course, every time I end up with a really rare bottle, he would trade it to me for a bunch of junk bottles. Like if I found an $800 bottle, he would trade me $800 worth of one to five dollar bottles for it, which I still have to this day because you know, those junk bottles are hard to sell. Of course, when I was a new collector, I didn't know that. Another thing, and of course, if he was being deceitful by hiding bottles and stealing from me, who knows how many other times it's happened that I wasn't even aware of. I mean, if he stole from me multiple times, then there's a distinct possibility stole from me even more times that, that I didn't even know about. Yeah, that's definitely 
very distinct possibility. Oh, another thing that you did. Another time you ripped me off. Well, didn't exactly rip me off. I could just say you outsmarted me by offering me $400 for a bottle that you later sold for $1,400. Yeah, I'm talking about a Gunwaz Chinese Remedies from Colorado in the large quart size. Yeah, see right there, you just got a thousand extra dollars from me. And a thousand dollars from the Amber Coke ripoff. And all the other times you ripped me off, it's another thousand dollars. So you owe me about three thousand dollars. But I know you're not going to pay me three thousand dollars. So I'll settle for two thousand dollars. So long story short, Ed Kuski, I know you're watching this because I'm sure people are going to talk about this with you. So it's time to make things right between us by paying me off. You probably never thought I would be the king of social media and destroy your reputation for doing this to me, but I am. But of course I'll make a video saying you did right by me if you do. So you can do the right thing and pay me. I'm only asking for half. And that's, of course, old prices. So it's more like $6,000 by today's standards. Because this all happened before 1997. So if I ask you for $2,000 instead of $6,000, then you should be very happy to pay that. So let's see if you do pay it. You can pay me by PayPal. SWBottles at yahoo.com. Yeah, that's for Southwestern bottles. And if you think you can sue me for ruining your reputation, well, you're wrong about that because, hmm. Well, first of all, I have studied the law pertaining to defamation of character quite extensively. And I've been to court on the subject even. So what I have learned is that it is impossible for you to sue me as long as I'm telling the truth, no matter how badly I hurt your reputation. So there you have it. As long as I'm telling the truth, you can't possibly win in a lawsuit with me. And of course, you know all this is true unless you've forgotten about it because it has been 27 years. Another thing Ed likes to do is likes to brag about whatever he has. Yeah, he has a great collection of Los Angeles bottles even though he's lived in Pennsylvania for, I don't know, 15 years. But anyway, he likes to embellish his stories and not tell the truth. Like for example, they'll say, this was personally found by me, saying that it was found by him, but it was really found by me. Hmm, he doesn't want to admit that, but the Ed Halbrider flask was dug by me and me alone. He wasn't with me at the time. I actually dug that in Needles, California. And when he found out about that, he decided to come to Needles to dig with me. This guy is bad news. He, this guy's a liar, a cheater, and a thief. So now that you know that, he's lucky that I didn't ruin his reputation 30 years ago like I should have. Because we were digging together in 1994 very frequently. You've probably heard stories of digging partnerships being dissolved because of something some kind of disagreement. A lot of times this happens. Somebody will steal something or they just will disagree on some very important valuable bottle. But I let him get away with these things because I love digging so much and I couldn't find anybody else to dig with except for him. So if I lost him as my digging partner then I'd be all alone which uh, basically I do 95% of the time anyway, but back then 
I needed him to help me stay motivated because digging in the Los Angeles area, it's hard to stay motivated when you're by yourself. I hate to have to do this, but for legal reasons, in case he does try to sue me, I have to say that this is just my opinion. Although, I, as a victim of crime, I remember everything in great detail. I'm sure he's forgotten most of this stuff because being a thief is not something you remember. Being the victim of the crime is what's remembered. Do any of you out there actually think I would be making this stuff up? Why would I? I haven't even seen this guy since the 90s. And uh, I don't need the money. I'm just trying to do this to ease my mind because this is really bugging me. I just want to get paid because it's the right thing to do. I just cannot stand for somebody to do that to me and get away with it. That's all.